Hello, I'm Axel Paxel, and uh, today I will show you how to paint the Dung Beetle Knight. Uh, you can see a reference photo on the upper right corner, which uh, it will look like uh, that at the end of the video. Uh, Alright, so first we're just gonna... Uh, I'm going through the different paints that I've used. I know I've sped it up here, but uh, I will slow it down uh, eventually. It will not stay like this for, for a long period of time. Uh, the first paint that I'm using is, uh, or putting down on the wet palette, is uh, Model Color Black from uh, Vallejo. Um, <clears throat> I'm fiddling about. I'm tr actually trying to get the paint out of the bucket here, but uh, it um, the the paints were knocked over in the drawer, uh, and they stay like that for quite a while. So it gets harder to uh, extract the paint from the dropper bottles. You can see there, <laughs> does not look like does not look good. Uh, so I would uh, suggest that you keep your paints in an upright position, not do what I uh, I just did uh, and kept them knocked over in my drawer. Uh, so the paints, yeah, uh, the paint, the red was a flat red from uh, Vallejo. Uh, the orange was pure orange and uh, from Vallejo, and uh, the yellow is Uriel yellow from uh, Games Workshop. You can see the pencil that I'm, uh, or no, uh, the brush, I mean, uh, I'm using for this. Uh, this is a mixing brush. Um, this, I would not use the, the brushes that you're painting with uh, to, to mix paints or to add water or do stuff like that because it will ruin your brushes and the bristles uh, very easily and very fast because paint goes all the way up into the metal part, which is called a ferrule. And uh, if you do that, like, sometimes, then then the, um, uh, the brush will uh, uh, get destroyed. So I'm, I'm using an old thing. Okay, so here I'm mixing in uh, some red with some black in order to create the darkest uh, color on the, um, on the scale armor. I'm sorry uh, for the picture to or the video to go slightly out of uh, uh, on the edge there, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I also added some water to all the paints. Uh, I never, almost never, use paints straight out of the bucket. Uh, you you need to add some water. Uh, I guess the ratio on the different paints is, uh, for the red, maybe one part water, one part paint. The orange, which I'm mixing in now, is slightly, uh, slightly less uh, of a base color, which means that it has uh, a little less paint per... It's, it's a little bit more watery to begin with, so I add a little bit less water to that. Um, the yellow is a uh, layer paint from, uh, from uh, Games Workshop, uh, Ariel Yellow. So that does not need that much water, but I still add water to it. Um, I will show you the consistency uh, when I draw it on my thumb, so you will see, uh, you will see the brush marks um, that you want for, for this effect. So I'm getting ready to paint, start painting now. Here I'm testing the consistency of the uh, uh, the black mixed with um, mixed with uh, red. Slightly out of focus there, <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so you can see the, the way I'm moving the, the brush is like sideways on top of the uh, texture. This is because I do not want to hit the, the black recesses uh, between the scales. 
uh, those small lines. Um, you will do this sometimes uh, when you when you do this, but overall, I want to keep them black in order to uh, maximize the contrast between the light and the dark parts of the of the scale. So you cannot see that very well in the video, uh, but it is lighter than. Um, it is not as dark as the black, but it's it's kind of hard to see. You can you can barely see it. But this layer is important because black is is <laughs> uh, too black. So I keep uh, moving the brush in uh, this uh, this fashion, like sideways over, like great, almost grazing the model. I do not push the, I do not push the the bristle uh, on hard onto the model. I just swipe it across, and this will uh, this allows me to hit the the upper uh, parts and not the recesses. This is an uh, especially uh, efficient technique if you if you paint um, uh, texture and uh, don't want it to hit hit, um, hit the recesses. So here I'm testing the consistency again. If you if you apply if you apply too much water into your paint. Um, the paint will start to uh, hit the black recesses. So that's uh, a, a clue for when you have a, a too much uh, water in your paint. If if uh, if it like sort of fills up the um, the recesses instead of the upper parts of the armor, uh, just add more uh, paint in in that case. So I'm just going over the whole uh, area of the shoulder here. Again, trying to not uh, get paint into the recesses. I do that occasionally, um, which is no big issue um, because you can always go over uh, with uh, with a black with a black color, uh, but that if you if you do that in the last parts, it gets tedious because there are so many uh, so many uh, black lines, and that takes a lot of time to like go through. <laughs> you could do it that way, but this is uh, faster. Painting it in in this like gracing fashion. So I'm not I'm not actually using the tip of the brush. I'm using the side of the brush. So the shoulder right now is almost complete with the base color. So yeah, this is actually my first YouTube tutorial. So any like points, mistakes, uh, be sure to uh, call them out. And um, yeah, I'm actually recording uh, this uh, video on my uh, cell phone. Uh, I don't own a camera. Uh, and um, the camera is being held uh, with a selfie stick, uh, like, if you would, if you if you saw the the setup, you would laugh. <laughs> it looks, uh, yeah. Well, I guess uh, if it if it if it works, it's not stupid, right? Uh, but anyways, um, here I'm uh, starting to apply the um, the uh, the red. This is uh, red mixed with uh, water, about a one to one ratio. I actually decided to add a little bit more uh, water here. Test 
testing the consistency again. If you use a paint that is too thick, you will see the brush uh, strokes. And uh, that would not look good because the, um, it, the, uh, the um, transitions would not look smooth. So you need a perfect consistency like between not too watery and runny, uh, but not too, uh, not too, uh, not too thick as well, because then you will see the brush uh, strokes. <laughs> and here you can see I have some problem with uh, with uh, I'm I'm actually using blue tack on the legs to keep the model onto the um, to the wood piece, but uh, it does not work very well. So I just decided to drop that, and uh, I think in, in in the next video. Um, so here I'm applying the same, uh, I'm doing the same technique as uh, I, I used uh, putting down the, the base color. But I'm not filling out the whole part of the shoulder with this new, uh, this new color, the, the flat red mixed with water. Um, I leave the edges where I want, uh, where I want the the areas to be darkest naturally the the light hitting the model uh, would come from uh, uh, like any object source lightning of course but uh, on this model i decided that the light was coming uh, from uh, above um, so on the scale armor it would be more highlighted towards the uh, the upper parts, so like the center of the um, of the scale piece. Uh, so what I do is I actually apply the color um, in a in a smaller and smaller area as I transition into the brighter uh, colors. Uh, the brush that I'm using is uh, Winsor & Newton series, I think it's a zero. Um, yeah, I can recommend this, uh, this, this line of brushes. I would not use uh, synthetic brushes. If you want to like really elevate your painting, you should use um, um, like the real stuff. And they're not that expensive either, like 15, 10 to 15 dollars uh, a piece. And you don't need that many. So here you can see I'm actually, um, yeah, one part of uh, painting is actually really important to mention. Uh, you can always see that I uh, put the pencil in. No, the, I put the brush into the into the um, paint, but before I apply it, I actually wipe most of it off on my uh, thumb. Um, because if I were to apply it directly uh, onto the onto the model, it would flow into the recesses. It would not look good. The transitions would be too jarring, and yeah. So uh, I always wipe most of the brush, most of the paint off the brush before I apply it. I think I have a lot of wasted paint that way, but uh, it works. <laughs> Uh, so now I'm starting to actually, now we can actually see the transition between the uh, darkest parts of the armor and the, and the red. It's already starting to, well, <laughs> slightly come together. It doesn't look very well, very good as of right now, but we will get there. Remember that I'm still only... I've still uh, only used the two colors. So here I'm actually starting to apply the the orange 
wipe most of it off and um, I start in the middle or slightly off to the middle okay so here's another um, tip for for you um, you cannot actually see it because I move the brush very fast but uh, the way paint works and uh, the way when you apply it is that you it always leaves the most paint at the area where your brush uh, leaves the model okay so if you if you apply paint on one spot move the brush to another spot uh, the last spot will always leave most of the paint and applying this to, to this model um, where you want the transitions to be nice uh, and start start to like glow in the middle uh, you should move the brush from uh, when you apply the paint move the brush from the outer ports of where you want the tr transitions to be and and lift the pens lift the brush when uh, when you get to the center as most paint will be left into the center if more if more paint would be left at the at the um, uh, transitions between the colors it would um, it would not make the transitions look that uh, smooth i hope that makes sense <laughs> As you can see, I still have some problems with the wooden <laughs> wooden handle. Uh, uh, I will toss that out soon. And you can see I'm I'm uh, not always following my own uh, advice. Um, sometimes I I use the brush in a way that I leave it uh, along the edges but um, I wouldn't advise that um, because of the reason I mentioned it will leave more paint in the area where you leave uh, where you pull the brush off the model <coughs> sorry starting to apply the yellow now so here you should really see the um, the shoulder coming together I'm sorry for it being slightly out of uh, out of camera angle there but yeah I'm, I'm using the same technique I, I um, wipe most of the paint off and then I start in the middle and I try to leave the brush uh, in the middle like pull the brush off the model from the middle if you painted for a long time with the same brush I would uh, recommend that you uh, wash it in a little bit of water uh, before you continue painting because uh, dry paint will will uh, really uh, destroy your uh, brush so just to get at that dry paint off your brush uh, it's good for the health of the of the brush so we don't have to buy new all the time Again, using the side of the brush to to not touch the the recesses where where the dark lines uh, go. This will help build up the contrast between black and and light, and it will look really good. Most uh, paint jobs I've seen of uh, this uh, model uh, disregard that and just well, not maybe blow just put the paint on there but uh, they they disregard the um, the lines and it's a shame because uh, the artist who created this model created those uh, patterns for a reason and uh, i think they 
they work very well with um, with a highlighted color on the on the shoulder to make those really like pop. I'm adding a little bit more uh, water, I think, to the um, to the paint. Wiping most of it up there. You can see that as I as I used my fingernail, uh, which is actually better if you want to see the transparency of the paint. It's better to use the uh, the uh, nail uh, portion of your thumb uh, rather than your skin, um, because it will it will be more uh, easy for you to see how how the transparency works. Now oh, it's starting to come together. Um, when you're doing this, you might notice that you're losing some of the colors uh, within the transitions. Uh, like here, I, I thought that I had lost the uh, warmth in the uh, in the model, so I'm just applying some orange again, going over a, a bit of the yellow in order to create uh, more warmth and a smoother uh, transition. So it's a little bit of a back and forth uh, project. Uh, you can go with whatever effect you like, but uh, if you want high contrast in the colors, you need you need a dark part and you need a light part. Um, and the lighter the lightest part is, and the darker the darker darkest area is, uh, the more the lighter parts will like really really pop. Here I'm just applying some uh, base, uh, some pure black, and going over some of the um, some of the lines uh, in the scales that I've, uh, I've accidentally painted over with uh, with the um, uh, as I've been going over the the, sh the shoulder with different colors, which inevitably will will happen. This part is optional; you don't have to do it, but. Um, <clears throat> I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so <laughs> I, uh, I decided to do it here. Uh, for this, I'm using a triple zero Winsor & Newton uh, miniature uh, brush. Uh, the consistency of the paint is undiluted with water. Uh, it's straight from the bottle. Um, model color black. You could add a little bit of water and that will prevent it from uh, drying out on the tip of the brush uh, so fast. You, you could see that it happened to me at one part there where <laughs> I pushed the brush rather hard onto the shoulder but uh, it left no, um, no paint. I apologize for the audio sound uh, too, by the way. Uh, my, my setup uh, is not yet like fully uh, professional, so I'm actually using my phone to record the, uh, the voiceover as well. I have bought um, uh, a microphone, but uh, it's in shipping, so, uh, and I wanted to get this video out as, as soon as possible because people have been uh, requesting it. You can see that I've attempted some 
like color scheme uh, on the back of the wing of the of the model uh, disregard that I was just playing around and um, was not very happy with the results so I will paint over that I'm happy with the shoulder though I'm just painting over some uh, missed parts uh, that was a little bit hard to get to uh, or that I disregarded uh, when I when I made all the transitions so I'm just going over those so um, I want to keep all these uh, videos free to watch on uh, on YouTube um, and I also want to keep them ad free because uh, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and uh, there's nothing more annoying than interruptions. Um, so I want to keep all my videos ad free as well. Um, but making this videos, uh, well, making this video took a great deal of time, <laughs> painting and uh, cutting and, um, and uh, post processing. Uh, and of course, uh, also doing the the voiceover. Uh, so I've actually set up a, a Patreon uh, account. Uh, you can support me with whatever amount that you feel that you want to. There, it's not uh, obligatory. You will <laughs> you will have access to all my uh, YouTube uh, videos regardless. But um, if you if you really like my work, um, then. I would really appreciate it if you uh, if you uh, support me, because uh, uh, well, doing this uh, hobby is uh, is uh, really fun for me. But um, I I need to uh, um, I need to support it with uh, with a like part part income. Uh, because it just takes uh, it takes up a lot of my uh, my time, so that would be nice. So, anyways, uh, back to the model. You can see that the shoulder is uh, starting to really like pop. <clears throat> Uh, I'm going back and forth uh, with the colors and here I uh, I decided that it was a little bit uh, cold uh, when compared to the other sides of the model so I added a little bit of uh, orange to make it warmer in this uh, in this area sorry for <laughs> having the model in an angle where you actually can't see um, Yeah, here I'm just trying to, yeah. <laughs> that blue tack is not always like very firm. So the model actually kept moving while I was painting. Um, you could just hold it in your hand as well. <clears throat> One reason I don't always do that, but I actually almost tend up doing that is because um, well like you saw uh, the blue tech doesn't hold the model uh, very still in place so but uh, one um, actually back to the video you can actually see that I'm actually trying to get some white out of the model color uh, it's I think it's ivory yeah it's ivory Vallejo ivory uh, model color, I think it is. Um, but yeah, this has been left. It was not that much paint left in the in the bottle, and it uh, was turned over, like laying sideways in the drawer. And now I can't get paint out of the bottle, so I had to grab this. This is, 
You can use like any white you want, uh, but this is Primacryl uh, Titanium Schminke. It's um, uh, it's a I think it's a German um, artist acrylic. It's very nice. It's but you have to be really careful because it's really really white. Um, but yeah, as I was saying earlier, one of the negative sides of um, of uh, holding the model or handling the model a lot is that you uh, you have uh, grease in your uh, in your uh, fingers and uh, fat, and that will actually get left on the model. And if you apply paint above or over um, a grease mark or, or fat, uh, then the paint is likely to chip off. Um, yeah, and if you, if you handle the model a lot on parts that you actually painted, the paint will also start to come off naturally. So if you if you hold the model from the beginning uh, in your hand, uh, try to at least hold it in in a way where uh, where you won't touch the the parts that you've already painted. Now I'm mixing a new uh, highlight color. This is just uh, Ariel yellow mixed with uh, white. And you have to be really careful uh, with how many, how large of an area you actually uh, apply this in, because if you if you apply it over a large larger area, it will totally overwhelm the model and will, and it will not look good. I actually make this mistake here. I I paint this uh, in a little bit too many places, so it will this it desaturates the the warmth effect, uh, and it. I didn't like the look of it, so I, I go uh, over it. But um, yeah, you, you will see what I what I mean. Uh, there was a cut there. Yeah. When you add white to a color, uh, like mentioned, you actually desaturate the color, um, which can be fine in some instances, but you have to keep it in mind it depends on what the effect you are actually going for but if you if you continually like always desaturate the color um, it, it will not look that well and it, it will it will be a bit jarring so here I'm just checking to see if I I'm pleased with how it's going so far. I probably should have stopped there, but I, I keep going over. Um, <clears throat> going over the same spot more than once will, will because it's, uh, it's uh, a layer consistency, will build up the layers. So each time I go over, over the same space, the same spot, it will uh, look... Um, it will look brighter. Right now, I think it looks a little bit too like yellow. Um, and uh, it's no problem if you do mistakes like this because you can always paint over it because you're working with uh, um, like thin layers of, uh, of paint. But uh, well, you, you're. Um, 
the worst case is that you spend a little bit more time on it uh, because you have to go over it but there like there's no damage done if i were to completely paint over this with black it, I, I would still be able to achieve the same result so don't be afraid to like muck about but of course try to try to achieve the the result that you want and don't be alarmed if you don't get it right away Yep, slightly out of uh, camera angle there. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I really like the uh, Kingdom Death models uh, from King. Uh, yeah, from Kingdom Death. Duh. <laughs> uh, they're really like dark and. Um, I like the way they uh, they look. Uh, here I'm obvious, obviously not checking the camera because it, well, you can't see anything. So I'm sorry about that. Um, I will likely correct it soon. Uh, I think I'm going over some of the lines in the in the armor. Yeah. So getting a good result is not like uh, a quick and easy thing. Um, I think I spent about 15 minutes on the other shoulder uh, because I had already had uh, the colors uh, mixed and uh, etc. That takes a little bit of time mixing the colors and most YouTube uh, tutorials uh, that I've seen actually have pre-mixed colors or um, yeah, so if you want, I could lay, uh, have them, um, not include them, uh, the mixing of the colors and just talk a little bit about it. Uh, but, uh, I found that actually seeing the painter mix the colors is actually a little bit helpful in order to, um, uh, see the consistency and actually how much water is, uh, is, uh, applied to the, to the paint because that is important. Yeah, here I'm actually, I actually missed uh, uh, an even wider highlight color. Um, this is actually where I go a little bit wrong uh, because this is too, this is too bright. I think you, you may agree, but yeah, you got to be really careful with the titanium white from Schminke because it's it's so white. This is not actually pure white either. It's uh, it's white with uh, a little bit of um, uh, Uriel yellow, but still too bright. And I apply it in a little bit too many spots. <clears throat> this is just a preference of mine, of course. If you like, if you like it with uh, that sort of effect, you can you can go for it. But uh, I was not that happy with it, so I, I think I'm going over it in a second. So yeah, uh, my Patreon uh, account, I have, uh, I've added like three uh, tiers, uh, one for like $1, uh, one $2 and one $5 um, on a monthly basis, not per, per video. I will try to uh, produce one to two videos uh, a month. Um, like I said, they take time and um, and uh, 
I, I want to produce high quality content as well. I, I don't want to just like spit them out. Um, so uh, I will continue to make videos that I think uh, will be useful. Uh, some of you may have seen my uh, Kingdom Death um, White Lion with the uh, with the blood uh, coming, like the dripping blood from its paw, um, and I will do a similar effect on the base of this model actually, uh, because this is a dung beetle knight. Like it lives by uh, basically pulling its own feces around like in a dung ball. Uh, so, um, so I want to, uh, I want to add an effect where he's standing on a, on a base, like, uh, on a, on a, um, on some dirt, uh, and, um, some mud is actually like, it's coming out of the mud in a, from a hole in the ground. So I will add some mud string effects like, uh, like it will seem like he just got out of the hole in the ground uh, and the mud will be like sticking uh, from his sword, from his, uh, from his legs. And uh, I think it will look really cool. And it will contrast great with, uh, with the spotless uh, armor that, uh, uh, that he has on, on the higher parts of, uh, of his uh, <clears throat> armor. Yeah, so here I've uh, painted up the the other shoulder as well. I did not spend as much time on that um, because I had the colors pre-mixed and I didn't add that tuto tutorial for for it because um, it, it was very similar to the to the other shoulder or completely similar, actually. So here I'm. Um, I'm uh, coloring. Uh, I'm painting the the middle part of the uh, the armor. The light is coming from uh, above. Remember, so uh, the the top parts will uh, be highlighted more than the uh, lower parts and underside of the protruding chest uh, piece. So similar technique here, but here it's actually a little bit more difficult not to get paint in the recesses because the recesses are um, not that different in height level from the surface. So paint has an easier time of flowing into the recesses. If you, if you think that this uh, uh, is difficult, then uh, just go over it and maybe paint in some dark lines where, where the recesses are afterwards, uh, especially on the underside. I'm sorry for the <clears throat> camera being out of, uh, <laughs> out of angle. <laughs> yeah. Blame it on the, on the camera, not the, not the user. You can see that I'm actually going over uh, a bit of, uh, the like what do you call that the face in the middle with with some of the paint that doesn't matter because I will obviously paint that uh, up uh, later so yeah somewhat Somewhat done with the uh, uh, base color on the chest piece. I actually, uh, when I tried to remove the the camera from the selfie stick after this, I I dropped the phone onto the model. And the model like landed on the floor <laughs> and uh, his, his uh, one leg uh, snapped off. Uh, it snapped off in the place where you glue it, so it's no problem. But uh, yeah, 
if if you see uh one legged joe hair uh it's because uh <laughs> it's it's because it's actually it actually snapped off during the fall so i will glue that later it's no rush to get that uh, leg done Yeah, so I can see that I already have a little bit of a problem, like uh, keeping the model in in the focus of the uh, <laughs> the actual um, uh, angles of the camera, so that you can actually see what's going on. I'm sorry about that. I will correct this uh, shortly, I think. Yeah, so here I'm starting to apply the the red in the same fashion as I did on the uh, shoulder. Um, I'm not going over the whole base with uh, the whole the whole chest piece with this color. Um, because I want, again, to maximize the contrast between the dark and the lighter parts uh, of the chest piece. And you can also see here that I've decided to drop the wooden <laughs> handle <laughs> with the blue tech because, uh, well, it wasn't working very efficiently. Sorry for it being out of uh, out of uh, angle there again. But yeah, I'm basically applying the the color. I'm I'm applying more layers of the, of the red towards the where I want to highlight it on on the top. Um, yeah. And I move the brush in a similar fashion here. Like uh, using the side of the brush and uh, not the tip. If I were to use the tip, um, it would take like so long <laughs> to paint those, uh, those uh, scales because there are Oh, there, you can actually see that I have a, had a little bit too much uh, paint on the, um, on the brush and you can see that it pulls immediately into the recesses. Um, yeah, I, sh I should have wiped some of that paint off now, actually. Um, as you keep painting, of course, you get less and less paint on the brush, so it, it turns out fine in the end but uh, I did get some paint into the dark recesses there I just decided to keep on painting <laughs> so here you can actually see the transition quite well between the darkest part and the red Naturally, light would not be hitting the model from uh, from beneath. So, the parts that are uh, not into in the um, direction of the light, which is uh, from above, will be darker. So, uh, you always have to keep in mind the direction of the light, and you have to decide where the light is coming from because if that changes uh, as you are painting. Um, it will not look good because uh, it, it or it could look good, but it does not look like uh, or like a realistic lighting look, and something will maybe feel a little bit off. Um, yeah. Here I'm applying uh, some of the, uh, the orange. 
uh, again to make the transition from dark to bright. Uh, regarding the paint, uh, like I mentioned uh, earlier, it's not about the the paints. You can achieve this effect with like any color. You can use, uh, for for instance, uh, dark blue and uh, go to uh, bright green. Um, it's not really about the the paints. You can achieve this with like uh, any any sets of paint. You don't have to use that orange, or you don't have to use that red as long as you have uh, a dark color uh, and a transition from there to bright you you, you could actually um, only have in this case white black and red and just use mixes uh in between but that would not look as uh as good so you should actually have some some colors but um yeah you don't have to use exactly the colors as uh, as i'm using So I think now I'm going to start applying the, yep, the Uriel yellow. Here we can see the consistency, wiping most of it off. Going over the same spot in order to build up layers it will become a little bit more yellow each time you do that, of course. Yeah, sorry about it being out of focus there. Um, not out of focus, but out of camera angle. Um, that's obviously something I gotta work on. But remember, <laughs> this is my first video, so... I hope that I can be forgiven. So here you can actually see uh, that the highlight is not that uh, apparent, so I got to build up the layers. And this is actually the same uh, yellow, but um, I'm actually just applying it over the same spot many times in order to achieve a brighter uh, look. And I have slightly more paint on the tip of the brush as well. So you can see that it's starting to build up and it's starting to get brighter. working on the transitions there. It's starting to come together quite nicely, actually. Um, but it still needs a little bit uh, lighter highlights on the top. So uh, I think I'm getting to that now. Yeah, this is the brighter highlight. And you can see that uh, it's not that thick in uh, consistency, but it's not too 
watery either so that paint will go into the recesses and that's a fine balance actually if you notice that it goes into the recesses then um, just apply more paint Yeah, I decided that maybe I needed a little bit more white into the mix, so I added a little bit more white in order to add the the highest uh, or the brightest parts. You don't want to overwhelm the the model with uh, like bright um, bright highlights because that will. Uh, that will actually cause the model to not look highlighted much. You you want to have strong white highlights, uh, or not white, but white maybe mixed in with a small a part of another color, in a in a small uh, key places on on the model, and that will actually uh, look make the model look like more uh, highlighted. Uh, again, and that will maximize the contrast better. If you were to put like uh, highlight colors all over the model, it will um, it will actually uh, derange the effect of the highlight. And it will work against you. So one of the key things that this video actually can teach you is that um, the balance, no, not the balance, um, working with contrast and how it can actually make uh, make small details on some parts of the model like really, really pop. Um, contrasts are a great way to uh, achieve focal points on your on your model. I'm sorry about it being out of uh, uh, camera angle again there. I'm just smoothing the transitions. Uh, there I used some orange to make it a little bit warmer again. So you can clearly see the transitions between bright orange, no bright uh, yellow yellow, orange, red, and dark red, which looks kind of nice. And here I'm just deciding to go over some of the spots on the shoulder. In order to make the transitions appear a little bit more smoother and add some warmth that's uh, orange that I'm using on the brush right now. Yeah, it's starting to come together quite nicely now. I may tweak it some in some parts, but uh, overall it's uh, it's looking good, I think. It's also coming up uh, at the end of the video. If you actually uh, watched whole th uh, the whole video through that, uh, um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, and if you really like uh, what you see, I will continue to make content. Uh, you can support me by uh, liking uh, the video, uh, even subscribing. And if you really want to support me, you go to my Patreon page and uh, donate whatever amount that you uh, you would like. I will continue making Kingdom Death models. Um, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I picture myself painting all of them. Thank you for watching.